Then, how do we account if the purchase is in lump sum? So, sa manang lump sum, ma'am, for example, you're going to buy the building and the land at one price. So, on sa omani mo na siya pag allocate sa cost sa property. So, the acquisition cost of a group of items of PPE acquired on a lump sum price or a basket price will be allocated using the relative fair values at the date of purchase. For example, ang Utah, is, Utah o building is purchased for 1 million. And of course, we need to segregate the land and the building, if, especially if the building is usable, magamit pa ni mo ang building, you intended to use the building, separate gini mo ang land and building. Wala man gi-indicate ito pila ang land, pila po ang building. So, dapat ma-divide ni mo ang 1 million between the land and the building. Ano kinahalan mag ko siyang i-separate, ma'am? Because land is non-depreciable and the building is depreciable. So, kung mo depreciate ang building, kinahalan man siyang i-divide ni mo over the useful life or you use other depreciation methods. Kinahalan naman na siya accumulated depreciation and the land is non-depreciable. So, kinahangla ni mo siyang ilain. Kaya para ma-depreciate ni mo ang building. So, how do you divide? So, for example, if the building has a fair value of uh, 5 million and the uh, land has a fair value of, um, let us say, 10 million. So, kaunin mo ang ilahang ratio. So, 5 million plus 10 million is 15. So, ang building is 5 over uh, 15 and then the, the land would be 10 over 15. Kuhaunin mo ang, ang iyahang ratio and then multiply ni mo sa 10 million. So, nga naon siya. So, if the land and building is acquired on a lump sum price, so, the lump sum price is allocated to both land and building using their relative fair values. And this applies even if the entity intends to use the building only on the, in the meantime and demolish it in the future. Or the entity intends to demolish the building right away. So, the cost allocated to the building is recognized as a loss and the cost of the new building shall not be affected by the allocated cost of the demolished building. So, i-allocate niya hapon ni mo siya even if ang building is kamito ng ni mo kareyo but you will still demolish that or you will demolish it right away even if i-demolish na, na ni mo siya largo. So, i-allocate niya hapon ni mo sa land and building. Uh, and the cost will be allocated to the building will be considered as a loss. I mong i-record ang building pero i-close kaya po natin mo siya as a loss. May, na may example sa inyong book. So, if you uh, number siya ano specific na example. Okay, so for example, you have on page um Okay, can you see ya? So on page eighty-five. Okay, so sa page eighty-five, so you have an example there. You have purchased land and building for a lump sum price of twelve million. The existing building will be demolished and a new building will be constructed. And then you have um, the following items and then compute for the allocated cost of the different classes of PPE. Assuming the land and building have fair values of 5 million and 10 million respectively and the old building is unusable and has insignificant fair value. So for case A, kay na ay fair value, di ba? Ingundiri, you allocate the land and building using the relative fair values. And assuming na nag over na nato ni mga cost niya, di ba? So, di lang na nato i-discuss kay ang i-illustrate lang nako kaning uh, allocating the cost of the building as a loss. So, for example, na-compute na nato kung pila ang land and the old building. So, di ba, ang total sa old building sa page 86 is 8 million 12. Di ba? 8 million 12,000. If you go to page 87 below, di ba, na-allocate man siya na allocate sa building sa old building ang 8,012,000 then our last part 
kana nasa pinakaubos, di ba? Allocated cost of the old building is 8 million 12, but this is closed to the loss on the recognition of assets. So, ang gibuhat is gi allocate sa building, pero gi uh, debit gihapon siya sa loss on the recognition of asset. Okay? Nga nung i-recognize ni muna siya, kay tukuran man siya o laing building. So, the old building will no longer exist. That's why you need to close the old building. And you, when you close the old building, you debit that to the loss on the recognition of the asset. So, muna siya ipasabot na i-allocate ni mo siya sa building and then it will be recognized as a loss. And the cost of the new building will not be affected then even if you demolish the old building and then the lump sum price will be allocated to the land only ang land dra imuhang uh, i, de i debit wala na i land ay wala na i land, land dra imong debit wala na i building if the building is considered as unusable from both the perspective of na wa tong sumpay perspective of the so tong sumpay ani perspective of the um, entity and the market participants. No, puto lang sumpay. Okay? So, if it's unusable, dili na magamit, of course, dili na ka mag-recognize sa asset. Okay, diba? Kinahanglan man usable ang asset to be recognized as an asset. The lump sum price is not allocated. Dili ni mo siya bahinon if the land and building are classified, classified as inventory or investment property measured at fair value. Pero kani kay we're talking about PPE man so actually wala na ni siya sa topic unta pero uh, para additional info lang siya you're not going to allocate the land and building if it is classified as inventory or investment property at fair value. But if you classify it at cost, investment property at cost, you will allocate both land and building. So, in summary, so, if we're going to read on other resources, so, mo overall nga summary. So, the land and building, if it is purchased at a single cost, usara imuhang gibayad, wala nila gi-allocate daan, nga maon yung building, maon yung land. So, if it's usable, you allocate the land and building according to their relative fair value. If it is unusable, so that would be classified only to the land. So, wala na nila botong building. So, if the old building is demolished immediately to make room for the construction of a new building, kung gi, gi ano na siya, gi, demolish na yun, gi raise na da yun ang building. Kaya ang other terms na sa problem kay raise, R-A-Z-E. So, ilahang i-demolish na siya. Kung i-demolish siya lang, gagpalangitan, gipalit ni mo ang building o ang yuta, o niya ang building, imuhal dahil gipaguba kay magama kag bagong building. So, sa oman na siya. So, the allocated cost of the usable old building It will be considered as a loss if the new building is PPE or investment property. So, itong explain ganun ha. You will still allocate the value of, uh, the, you will still allocate the cost to the old building. However, you're going to close the building account because there would be a new building. Diba? I-recognize man mo tong old building. And then, you debit that to the loss. So, it will be capitalized as part of the new building. So, katong atong gidemolish nga old nga building, maapil na siya sa cost sa new building if the new building is classified as inventory. So, what will be the treatment for the demolition cost minus the salvage value? Diba, imuha man siyang ipaguba ang building, so na demolition cost. Basta na salvage value, ma'am. Naman kay mga scrap nga makuha dito sa building. Like, for example, pag pag ni mo sa building, napakay mga nakuhang kabilya, napakay kay mga galvanized roof nga na, na gamit, nga magamit pa, mabaligya pa, or naba ito mga uh, bintana, to mga steel nga mga windows nga pwede pa siya mabaligya. Pero dilit ni mo siya gamiton sa new building, pwede ni mo siyang mabaligya. Naka itong halin niya, mo ito salvage value. So, ang net uh, demolition cost, So, that's the difference between the demolition cost and the salvage value will be part of the new building 
whether it's a PPE, investment property, or inventory. But this will be capitalized as cost of the land if the old building is demolished to prepare the land for the intended use but not to make room for the construction of new buildings. Kasi pasabot, ano niya? Pag ni mo ang building, pero dili siya tukuran o bagong building. Ganaan na yung ka nga tangtangon tong old building and then dahi mo ang tuyo nga naman nga ah, uh, Imo siyang ipademolish. Dili siya ang reason niya is not to construct a new building. So, asa man pa dong tong demolition cost o deducted by the salvage value that would be part of the land. Alang alang mag mag new building ka na wala may bagong building agitukod, di ba? Kaya again, not to make room for the new building. So, of course, understandable nga wala yung kay new building. So, ito siya sa land. But, the demolition cost minus the salvage value will be classified as part of the cost to sell if the decision to demolish occurs prior to the classification of the land as held for sale or if the demolition cost is a prerequisite to the sale of land as inventory. Then, the third one is what if you're going to use it for the meantime, mamantong gani ha, if you're going to use it in the meantime, but later on, you're going to demolish it, but still in the current period. And the purpose why you demolish the building is to construct a new building. So, the carrying amount of the old building, di ba gigamit naman to na to, niya nag-depreciate na sa daad to for a while, kay gigamit mo siya for the meantime, so the carrying amount of the old building will be considered as a loss. And the net demolition cost will be capitalized as cost of new building, whether building is PPE, investment property, or inventory. And the old building is, if the old building is subject to contract of lease, the payments to tenants to induce them to vacate the old building will be charged to the cost of the new building. Kung ang katunong building nga, um, Gipaabangan daw to siya, gipaabangan, and then of course, imuha man siyang gumbuon. So, sa kung mo itong nag-abang dito, para ma-induce sila nga mga hawa, kay imuha man siyang gumbuon, kay magama ka bagong nga building, di ba? If you're, if you're going to uh, um, ask the tenants to vacate, di ba, appeal man to siya sa cost of the property acquired. So, since magama man tag bagong nga building, so the cost para ma-induce sila nga mga hawa, that will be part of the new building. Okay? And then there are different modes of acquisition of property. How do we acquire property? It could be by uh, cash basis, on account, installment, exchange, trade-in, issuance of share capital, bonds, donation, government grant, or could be by construction. So if it's on a cash basis, so, the cost is the cash price equivalent at the recognition date. So, muna yung yunan. So, for cash, so of course, kung pila man tong cash price equivalent. If it is on account, what if inutang na siya and there is a discount? So, the cost would be the invoice price minus the discount regardless if taken or not. So, kung inutang na siya, pero dili installment ha, katong uh, direct na siyang uh, account daily installment. So, the cost would be the invoice price. So, if you can recall your basic accounting, so invoice price, and then you deduct the discount regardless if they are taken or not. So, itong invoice price is your list price minus any trade discount. So, kung unsay na sa sales invoice, mo na siya invoice price, and you deduct any discount. So, even if daw, dili ni mo siya i-take ang discount, you will still deduct that. But, if you are not going to take the discount, so the amount of discount for gun will be charged to the purchase discount lost account and will be shown as other expense. Pero again, inigkuha ni mo sa valuation sa uh, property or sa equipment pa na siya, you will deduct the discount. And if wala ni mo siya gida yun, uh, wala ka mo take sa discount, so ay mo siyang i-record as a purchase discount lost. Nga naman nga, i-deduct man dyan siya daan because accordingly, if you're a wise manager, you're going to avail of all available discounts in order to save. Kay savings man na siya ng uh, discount. It will reduce ang imuhang gasto kay instead of um, buying it in the invoice price, mas gamay man yung mabayaran. 
then what if is what if it is sold on installment basis so that is deferred beyond normal credit terms the cost is the cash price so if an asset is offered as a ca at a cash price so cash price ka ng spot cash kalamit ang pagmumpalit ka sa for example sa do exam na ay um doha ka pricing niya na magani daghan kayo nga pricing niya na ay pricing kung bayaran ni mo siya for cash na pre price dito kung imuhan na siyang i-installment for for example 3 months, 6 months, 12 months kana pong mga months niya lahi lahi po siya og installment price dahil ang price for 12 months dahil ang price for 6 months dahil po ang price for uh, 3 months so mo na siya installment price kung itigi-tigi ang pagbayad kung ang imong pagpalit kay installment basis on yan na ay cash price ug na ay installment price so for example ang cash price niya kay 5000 normally ang cash price kay lesser man siya sa installment price so for example ang cash price kay 5000 ang installment price kay 7000 kung sa man mo pag record ang imuhang equipment pala yung palit ka TV so sa to akong gihatag nga amount sa kalimot ko 5000 og 7 so 5000 kita hayan TV uh, cash price and then installment price is 7,000. So, unsa may gamito ni mo as debit to the TV, itong imuhang equipment. So, ang gamito ni mo kay cash price. Yung sa man na, na ko tong difference nga 2,000 ma'am. So, mao to siya ay atong i-treat as the uh, interest. So, naman na discount discount on notes payable. So, if you have read your uh, book so that will be amortized over the credit period. Then, what if it is acquired through an exchange? Okay, so if it is, uh, sorry, nabani siya example diri kay para maka yung ma picture out. At so, kung pangitaon ha, nakabasa na ba mo ani? Nakakita na ba mo? Problem nga similar ani kaning trade in. Wala lagi siya yan no exam. Nakakita ba mo? Murag nakabantay mo ko gani ha? Okay, ang yan na lang. May make answer sa exercises kaya example. Okay. Then, how about if it is acquired by exchange? Kanina na example, there is a book. Kanina exchange. So, if the exchange has a commercial substance, meaning the entity subsequent cash flows are expected to change as a result of the exchange, the asset received from the exchange is measured using the following order of priority. You have the first one is fair value of the asset given up. Unsay mong gipang hatag. Plus, cash paid or if ikaw ang nakadawat sa money you're going to deduct so again pag ikaw ang nibayad na, nakigibayaran dili kay ikaw ang nibayad nakigibayaran you are going to add that pero pag ikaw may na ay na receive you're going to deduct fair value of the asset received kung wala ning letter A and kung wala gihapon si A and si B so carrying amount of the asset given up again plus cash paid or minus cash received so ang pattern niya ang first two is puro fair value and then ang first niya is given up ang second received and then ang third is carrying and then given up so sila may paris niya kan sila po ay paris okay para ma-memorize na siya fair value fair value carrying amount to niya given uh, receive given given up day given up if it lacks commercial substance wala kayo problema because directly you're going to use the carrying amount of the asset given up plus cash paid or minus cash received so wala na fair value fair value nga gamiton okay so you have here in your book can we turn to page 92 okay so we have two uh, companies here we have ABC and XYZ. So si ABC na asay ibaylo kang XYZ. So sila pa silang duha, they will both record the exchange. So what would be the asset nga i recognize ni ABC? So remember, you have to take note if given ba ang fair value of the asset given up. 
So, na average fair value of the asset given up, you go to the column for ABC in page 92, diba? Ang yang ang yahang equipment na amay fair value ng given. So, that's 950. And then, say, rule plus cash paid or minus the cash received. Since na amay gibayad si ABC company kay XYZ, na amay siya sa last, di ba? Cash paid by ABC company to XYZ. So, therefore, you're going to add the cash paid. So, the total cost of the asset received by ABC is 1,100,000. 100. That's why ang debit niya is equipment new, 1 million 100. So, nganaon siya pag-recognize sa asset ng imuha na palit. On the other hand, si XYZ, i-record po niya itong iyahang na-receive ng asset from ABC. So, again, ang rule, if the fair value of the asset given up is given, then you will use that. So, on the side of XYZ, kung sa man ang fair value sa yung asset ngayon gi-give up, that is 1,100,000. But remember, plus cash paid or minus cash received. So, di ba siya may gibayaran ni ABC? So, that's a cash received. So, i-deduct ni mo ang cash received nga, 950. So, you will debit equipment new, 950,000. And if you can observe, dili sila palihas o amount in the gain or loss. So, dili sila reciprocal. Dili pasabot nga kung ang gain ni ABC kay 150,000, 150, mausad ang loss ni uh, XYZ dili. So, depende gina siya kung pilay balancing figure. Of course, you're going to close your old equipment. Kato yung mong by lo imong gi exchange imong gi give up and then you close the accumulated depreciation and record any cash payment or cash received and the balancing figure would be the gain or loss on the exchange and then you have illustration 2 in page 94 what if the fair value of the asset given up is indeterminable what if dili given so ang gamito nimo is the fair value of the asset received so on the side of abc ang fair value of the asset are received is 1,100,000. Mao man to siya, kihatag ni XYZ, di ba? Mao to fair value sa iyahang equipment. And on the part of XYZ, yung sa manang fair value sa iyang nadawat, it's 950. That's why, tanawin ni mo ang entry niya, di ba? On the part of, kang ano man siya, ABC. So, ang yan debit kay 1,100,000, which is the fair value of the asset of XYZ. Mao ay nadawat ni ABC. If we write commercial substance, you're going to record the asset using the carrying amount of the asset given up plus or minus any cash payment or cash received. So, in the case of ABC, so ang carrying amount of the asset given up is 800 and na siya so plus cash 150 so the total is 950 on the side of xyz the carrying amount of his asset is 1,200,000 and siya may nakadawat og money so minus cash received so 1,050,000 so man siya in page 95 what if it is trade in so, kung trade-in na siya, ang priority, as so, man, trade-in ka ng mura po, gihapon siya o exchange But, these are usually made by the entity with a seller, the one who sells assets similar to the one being exchanged. Na example, diha, sa page 96, di ba? You have an old cell phone that you have been using for almost 20 years now, and you finally decided to get a new one and say bye-bye to the old cell phone. So you, want, you want, so, you went to a cell phone dealer and found a new cell phone that costs 15,000. So, naagyo ay seller, ani na ay dealer. Sa exchange, pwedeng dili man siya seller. Nag-bailo ra mo, nag-barter ra mo, and yan na ay cash difference, na ay bayaran for the for any cash difference. Kani siya, pag trade-in, usually, ang, ang sa kasayda ni is seller. Then, kani siya, so you want you went to a cell phone dealer and found a new cell phone that cost 15,000. However, the dealer told you that if you trade in your old unit, imong ihatag, is render ni mong old unit, magbayad pa siya og 13,000 for the cash difference. So, you cannot reliably determine the fair value of your old cell phone. So, assuming that you decided to trade in your old cell phone, how much is the cost of your new cell phone? So, the cost of your new cell phone is the 15,000. 
So, since the fair value of the asset given up, di ba, katuin mo hang ipanghat, ihatag unta, is dili man available. So, ang gamito ni mo is the fair value of the asset received. That is the cash price without the trade-in. So, that would be 15,000. So, another example, if there are many given, nagan kayo siya given, so, this is your old equipment at cost. Then, you have the accumulated depreciation, average published retail value, and then the new equipment has the list price. We have the cash price without trade-in and cash price with trade-in. So, how do we value the uh, asset that you have acquired? So, again, if um, you're going to use the fair value of the asset given up, or the fair value of the asset received or the cash price without trade-in. Since you don't have fair value of your asset given up, so you're going to use the second priority, which is the cash price without trade-in. So therefore, you're going to debit your new equipment as 70000 which is the cash price without trade-in. Next is, what if you acquire the property by issuing equity instrument or debt instrument. So, may equity instrument or debt instrument, ma'am. So, if you can recall, equity instrument on, on the side of the company issuing them, that's credit to share capital. So, credit to ordinary shares or credit to reference shares. If it is a debt instrument and you're the one issuing the debt instrument, ikaw may namaligya, dili ikaw ang nipalit kay. If you can recall in our previous chapters on the investment in equity securities and investment in debt securities, kita may nipalit sa investment. Kani, kita may ni-issue. Pag kita ni issue kita na maligya, kita may nag-dispose. So, kita may nag-issue, kita nagbaligya og share capital. So, ang credit ana niya is the share capital. Again, it's either ordinary share or preference share. Kung nag-issue ta og debt instrument, so that's credit to bonds payable. So, that's why um, ang ato ang entry ani niya is either debt it's either credit the share capital or you credit the bonds payable. So, how do we value the property we have acquired? So, first is the fair value of the asset received. So, regardless kung equity ang issue or debt. So, fair value of the asset received. Pag dili given, fair value of the instrument issued. So, whether that's equity or debt. But, if one and two are indeterminable, or wala siya, wala siya given, then if it's an equity instrument, you will use the par value of the equity instrument. And if it is a debt instrument, so face amount of the bonds payable. So for example, on page 98 of your book, so ABC company acquired a land with a fair value of 1 million by issuing 10,000 shares with par value of 10 pesos per share and quoted price of 90 per share. So tagsao na to ni. So the fair value ng 1 million is the land. Diba? That's the fair value of the land which is you which is the item that you bought. So therefore that's our fair value of the asset received. So given man siya, so automatic ang land na to is 1 million. And you credit the share capital. Wala man siya ni-identify kung ordinary ba siya or preference. So, you credit share capital. That's 10,000 times 10. So, bisan pa o na ay fair value gihatag sa so land, you're going to record the share capital at par value. So, 10,000 times 10 pesos, that's 100,000. And the difference or ang remaining a balancing figure would be your share premium. Okay. What if ang 1 million is not given? So, therefore, the fair value of the asset received is not given. So, the second priority is the fair value of the instrument issued. And on the given nga problem, ang 10 pesos kay par man siya. So, therefore, the quoted price here is our fair value. So, simply debit the land, that's 10,000 times 90. Gamito ni mo tong fair value of the issued nga uh, shares. So, that would be 900,000. And you credit share capital, same gihapon, you credit the par value, 10,000 times 10 pesos, so that's 100,000. And the balancing figure is a share premium, that is 800,000. Okay. Next is what if it is a bonds? So, again, the priority is 
fair value of the asset received and second is the fair value of the instrument issued which is our bonds payable so you have there an example on page 99 on january 1 abc company acquired land with a fair value of 950,000 by issuing a three-year 10 percent 1 million bonds principal is due on january 1 20 x4 but interest is due at each year year end the prevailing market rate of interest for a similar instrument is 12 percent then the present value of the future cash flows from the bond discounted at 12% is 951,963. So since the fair value of the asset received is given, which is 950, depending on the first sentence, the fair value of the land. So we're going to use that as the value of the land. So debit land 950, you credit bonds payable 1 million. So you will use the face value as credit to the bonds payable the same way that you're using the par value of the shares so ang ang share share capital par siya ang gamitin nimo sa bonds payable ang face amount however since di man sila balance so may difference na 50,000 that's considered as the discount on bonds payable okay so what if number one is not given? Ang 950,000 kay dili given. So you're going to use the fair value of the instrument issued. And the fair value of the instrument issued is the present value of the cash flows from the bonds, which is 951,963. So debit, land, 951,963. And again, you will still credit the face amount of the bonds, 1 million, and the balancing figure is the discount on bonds, payable. What if wala gihapoy, wala given yun nga fair value whatsoever? So wala ang 1 and 2. Unsa man nato tong kay ABC Company aning page 98 katong sa land nga 1 million. So pag dili given ang fair value of the received and the instrument issued, so you will use the par value. So ang debit kay land which is 100,000 and 100,000 par value katong 10,000 times 10 and you credit uh, share capital 100,000. So wala share share premium. Kung ani puta sa katunay bonds, so ang gamito nimo is debit land 1 million and credit bonds payable 1 million. So hala siya face amount ang gamiton. So what if it is acquired by donation? So it will be measured at fair value and accounted for as income if the donor is unrelated party. It is a donated capital if the donor is an owner or a shareholder and it will be treated as a government grant in accordance with the PAS 20 if the donor is the government. So you have on page 101, ABC Company received a donation of equipment from XYZ Incorporated, an unrelated foreign corporation. So unrelated man siya. So therefore, on siya income. So, debit equipment, 1 million. Ah, sorry. Dapat siya. Necessary cost is 10,000. So, debit equipment, 1 million. And credit cash, 10,000. And the balancing figure is income from nation. What if the donor is a shareholder of the company? So, debit equipment, 1 million. Credit cash, 10,000. And the difference is donated capital, 990,000. Okay. If you like this video, please don't forget to click subscribe and hit the notification bell to be updated with the latest video lessons. Thank you for watching!